Hi, I'm Dr. John DeBach, and in today's short episode, we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite subject, sex. Specifically, how much is considered quote-unquote normal in a relationship. Now, I don't want you to think this is some kind of clickbaity title. I'm going to give you a very straight answer of what the kind of classic norm, if there is such a thing. Uh, but I'm going to also give you kind of the more complicated answer uh, right after that. And that might help you if you're kind of looking at your own relationship and going, what gives? Okay. And might also help you rectify if it's too much or too little sex uh, for your liking. Uh, before we do that, though, please be sure to click like and subscribe. Click the bell icon. Really helps the channel out and encourages me to keep making this free content so that you can improve your own relationship and help other people in your lives as well. So the quick answer on how much sex is quote unquote normal is once a week. Okay, so that's kind of a general, you'll, you, if you read statistics, it really depends on who's doing the research, but that's kind of what is normal. And that can be normal for people in their 20s all the way through their 80s. There are four factors, four main factors that really change this. And there are a couple kind of variables on top of that. And I think it's important to go into those as well. So the first is the physical health. If someone is having erectile dysfunction issues with men, especially you see this if there's alcohol, high stress in their life, or if they've gained a lot of weight, if they have diabetes type issues, right? Literally blood flow issues. Um, then that can change things also with women. If there's pain, if there isn't enough moisture in the private area, that can uh, definitely change how frequent they're willing to have sex and also affect how eager they are because there might not be pleasure there. So the second factor is the emotional health of the relationship, which plays a huge factor. If your emotional health in the relationship is good, chances are, if none of these other factors are are really in play, you can just have a good conversation about how much you want to have sex and heal it. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But emotional health is a big factor. The third one is how new the relationship is. So there's a typical, not always, but a typical honeymoon period where you're having a lot of sex. And by a lot of sex, I mean every day to three or four times a week. That's usually what the honeymoon phase looks like. Uh, and then the last one is how busy your life is. And this plays a humongous factor. Not only does it make it more difficult to schedule or squeeze in spontaneous sex, but people are drained. They get tired. So if you're in the phase of your relationship where you have small children or you've just inherited children somehow or you're opening a new business or you're stressed because you're, you're having two jobs, the exhaustion, the stress, and just the logistics are going to be the most common reasons why couples see a decrease in their sex life. Now, what typically happens, and this is from my experience working with literally thousands of couples, is you get into a lull because of logistical issues, and then you stay in that lull because it feels like a real emotional issue and nobody's realizing it's just that we don't have time or energy. And then when the time and energy comes back, like being empty, empty nesters or, or the job kind of stresses go away, you don't kind of recuperate. You don't go back up. So learning to speak about your sex life on a regular basis is really crucial. Crucial. The other thing that can affect how often you have sex that we haven't talked about is the sex drive. So if you are both high drive people, it might be normal for you to have sex three or four times a week. And in fact, I've had couples well into their 50s who've been together since, I mean, I don't know, what are we in now? So since the 80s, right? They've been together literally since the 80s and they have sex multiple times a week and they come to me because they want sex every day. So that's a very high drive couple, and it's a little bit outside of the norm. Um, but again, one thing to keep in mind is normal is a relative term. And normal is only useful in a statistical sense. So if you're trying to see what a standardized, normalized couple looks like, just to see if they're on the high drive or low drive, or so that we can define what sexless looks like. By the way, sexless typically is when you only have sex once 
a month or less. Some people use a more stringent once every two or three or four months. I think if you're having sex once a month or less, I would consider that a sexless marriage just for the record. Um, but if you, you know, your couple, your relationship doesn't have a normal. It's one of one. It is unique. So whatever is normal for you might be considered abnormal for other relationships. And it's not super useful to measure yourself against that. What I focus on with my couples or with the people who come to me frustrated with their own relationship is what would you like? And so the most important conversation, I'm going to boil this down because this is where you will get where you want to go is having a conversation with your partner and saying, Hey, I would like to talk about our sex life for a minute. If that's okay with you, get the permission to proceed. If they're in the middle of something and they're going to be dismissive, recipe for disaster. So get the permission. Then say, in an ideal world, if there were no physical barriers, either time or health, and, and emotionally both of us felt cared for in the relationship, I would like to have sex in that idealized world three times a week or four times a week or once a week if you're coming from, you know, less than that. Then you say, I want to ask you, though, because I don't know where your drive is. If there were no physical inhibitors and you felt emotionally cared for, how often in that idealized world would you like to have sex? Get the number. Get the number. I can't tell you how many times I do this with couples. They both say the same number or like within one variant. So one says two, one says three times a week or one says four or the other one says three. And both of them are in shock because it's like, well, then why aren't we having it that often? <laughs> so then the follow-up question, if you guys are closer than you think uh, or thought, is what do you need emotionally or physically to make that a reality? And let's work on that. It's really that simple. Don't overcomplicate the sex talk. When it's about frequency, it's... What do you need? How do we get there? How often in an idealized world would you like it? That's it. Make it simple. Keep it simple. Now, again, if you're having sex less than once a week, in my, in my view, this is not a view held by all clinicians or coaches or anything, but in my view, if I talk to a couple or I talk to a person and they're in a committed relationship and they're having sex less than once a week and there are no huge physical obstacles, and it's really just emotional, something's broken in the relationship and you need to tend to it. So if you can't do it yourself, reach out to me or reach out to a couples therapist or talk to somebody because you deserve to have great sex. We all do. All shapes and sizes. Everyone deserves to have great sex. Life, and, and often, life is too short. So figure out what's wrong in your relationship and get it going. I hope you found this useful. My name is Dr. John DeBach. On the screen right now, in front of you should be two videos that you can watch next about how to improve your relationship. Could be about sex, could be about emotions. It's probably what YouTube thinks is most important for you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.